Time interval signaling is the earliest and most basic type of railway signaling, first used on the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, which opened in September 1830. It can work with technology no more sophisticated than a flag and an hourglass, and yet was the mainstay of railway signaling for over 30 years until it was gradually displaced by the absolute block system from the 1860s onwards. During that time, it underwent some changes in technology and practices, which we shall explore shortly. However, the basic principles remained unchanged. In time interval signaling, a train is allowed to pass the line side signal only if another train has not passed within a fixed time, usually five minutes. If another train has passed within a longer fixed time, usually 10 minutes, the train must reduce its speed until it gets to the next signal, in this instance to half its maximum speed. If another train has not passed within 10 minutes, the approaching train may proceed at full speed. These flag signals are the earliest types of line side signals. They consist of a railway policeman, as signalers were originally known, standing by the side of the track and holding a flag. A red flag signals the train to stop. A green flag indicates caution. And a white flag signals all clear. Because these signals require a person to be present at all times, they can only be placed very close to the policeman's cottage. The first development in signaling technology was the mechanical signal. These are vane signals. They can be placed farther from the policeman's cottage because they can be left unattended. Here is a vane signal showing danger. This vane signal is showing the caution aspect. Note the position of the smaller green vein partway down the post. And this vein signal is showing all clear. Mechanical signals allow for another feature not possible with flag signals, repeaters or auxiliary signals. These are signals placed some distance along the track from the main signals, showing what aspect that the main signal will be displaying. A train can travel no faster than will allow it to stop at the next signal that might, so far as the driver knows, be at danger. On straight track, a driver can see for 875 meters, but this can be reduced by corners, gradients, tunnels, or over bridges. Trains will usually not be able to stop in even 875 meters from full speed. Without auxiliary signals, therefore, it is necessary for most trains to slow down for every signal. Because an auxiliary signal allows the driver to know in advance whether the train will need to stop at the next signal, it greatly reduces the need for trains to slow down for signals if they do not need to stop at them. These are slotted post semaphore signals. They are a later type of mechanical signal also used with time interval signaling. They work in the same way as vane signals but cost less to maintain and can be placed farther from the policeman's cottage. They are also used with a time interval with telegraph working method, which will be examined in another film. These slotted post signals are showing danger. These signals are showing caution. And these signals are showing all clear. Note that the semaphore arms have disappeared entirely into the slots in the post and are no longer visible. If a train should, for any reason, encounter another train upon the line, for example if the train ahead is travelling much more slowly than the train behind, both trains will make an emergency stop to avoid a collision. After a period of time, both trains will continue on their way, but will revert to the drive-by-sight working method until they reach the next signal.
equations and junctions require special consideration. We will look first at junctions. A time interval signal protecting a junction will remain at danger until a train approaches. If the route that the approaching train is to take is clear, the signal will change to show caution. The junction signal never shows all clear. With the block reservation display enabled, we will see that, at a junction, a time interval signal will only reserve up to 875 meters ahead, that is, 7 tiles at 125 meters per tile. This is because this is as far ahead as the railway policeman can see. Because of this, trains must travel slowly in the vicinity of junctions, and continue at that speed until they reach the next signal not protecting a junction. With the introduction of the mechanical signal comes the junction signal, the signal showing which route that a train is to take. Here is a junction signal of the vane type. And here is a slotted post junction signal. In simutrains, junction signals function as choose signals, allowing trains to be routed into any free platform at a station. They are thus usually placed at the entrance to stations. The main aspect will show caution if the train is routed into the scheduled platform. And the diverging aspect will show caution if the train is routed into any other platform. Whenever a train restarts after having stopped at a station, it will revert to the drive-by site working method unless it encounters a signal. Trains exiting stations can be signaled in one of two ways. The first method is by placing a separate stop signal at the end of each platform. These signals will act in the same way as signals protecting a junction and will not let trains depart from the station unless the route 875 meters or 7 tiles ahead is clear. Because trains will be limited to a slow speed after passing one of these signals, and because they do not provide for any time separation between the trains, another signal is needed just beyond the exit of the station. The second method is by using a special signal called a station signal. This is a station signal of the vane type. And this is a slotted post station signal. Notice how the signal has two arms. This is because the signal applies to trains traveling in both directions. One station signal controls exit from a whole station. It will only let a train depart if another train has not left in the same direction within the last five minutes and will show a caution aspect if another train has departed in the same direction within the last 10 minutes. It will also not let a train depart if its route 875 meters or 7 tiles ahead conflicts with the route of any other train. It is not necessary to place a further ordinary signal farther along the track when station signals are used, as trains may, if an all-clear indication is given, travel at full speed after passing a station signal. However, a station signal cannot discriminate between trains traveling in diverging directions after leaving a station. At stations with diverging routes or quadruple track, therefore, the former method is preferable. Station signals are, however, more economical for use in smaller stations. This film has demonstrated the principles and correct usages of the time interval working method, 
which is essential for running railway networks with more than one train in the early years. The further film will demonstrate the refinements to the time interval working method made possible by the development of the electric telegraph.